Hi, this is Mike, a uh, volunteer with Enable. Uh, Enable is a worldwide group of volunteers that make uh, 3D printed prosthetic hands for uh, kids, uh, all kinds of people that uh, are have some kind of a disability with their hand. Uh, it's, it's mechanical, it's wrist operated, and um, there are people around the world that are making these to help people out. I have been uh, using uh, this hand for probably a couple years now and have gone through a lot of uh, testing and you know just uh, fine-tuning and doing a lot of things so uh, some of the things I've learned over the time I thought I'd share uh, and I, I hope it'll be helpful to the builders and ultimately I hope it'll be helpful to the users that uh, uh, that that get one of these hands so that it's a good experience and it works well for them and um, you know just to help builders understand some of the things that uh, you know might be uh, beneficial to the users that that you know builders or somebody that doesn't have a disability like that might not really think about or realize so uh, let me talk a little bit about some of the materials I've used you know, most uh, use the uh, the uh, medical uh, padding. I found uh, something here. It's craft uh, material. It's soft. It's it's uh, it's uh, you can get it in different thicknesses. Um, I, th I think it's great. I use it for the liner for the cuff. It's uh, unlike the de the uh, medical foam. It's smooth, and I I just slide my hand in and out. Uh, this does not hold water, and it uh, it's provides enough padding to make it comfortable. So this is one uh, great thing to use for uh, part of the padding and part of the customization as far as the fit. Uh, let's see. Oh, the O-rings. Um, a lot of, I think most of us are using or have used uh, dental uh, O-rings for orthodontics. Uh, latex, they tend to stretch out and break. These are, believe it or not, these are, they're O-rings, but they're used for dampening the sound of your keyboard. They go over the stem of your keys and they keep it from clattering, but um, basically the same size. They are, they're tough and they don't stretch out and they last much longer. They don't stretch and break. They just last much longer than the than the dental bands. Um, you, know, you can get these on Amazon for you know, a couple bucks for you know, 100 or so of them. So these are much better for the, for the Phoenix, by the way. This is a Phoenix hand, and the Phoenix is operated by, um, by uh, bands here between the joints that pull the, pull the fingers open. So these are, are great. Use these instead of the dental bands, and uh, they'll last much longer, and you, you know, people will, have to, will not have to replace them as often. Uh, speaking of replacing, a great tool is the uh, dental pick, which I found is is great to be able to uh, pop the old uh, old ones out if you're doing a, a group change out of all the bands. Um, you pop them out, use it to put the new ones in, and it makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, another uh, tool that I came up with is, um, and this has really saved me a lot of, uh, headaches here is stringing the uh, the tendons or the lines through the hands, you know, from the fingers up through the the palm. Now, uh, mine when I set it up, you know, of course you want to sand all the joints, make everything smooth, no burrs, no burrs through the channels uh, where the line goes through, everything smooth. Now, on mine, I silicone grease all the joints and the channels uh, where the line runs through. Um, and so trying to string these, uh, is almost impossible to put a, uh, uh use a, 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 a braided line. Uh, it's, gosh, I think this is 130 pounds, you know, so obviously the, that's going to be pr plenty strong. Um, I don't use monofilament. I don't know if anybody does, but I, I tried it once just as I was experimenting with things. It tends to have a little stretchiness to it. The braided line does not. It uh, it tends to squeak. The braided line does not squeak, and uh, it's all around tougher. But pushing it through a channel that's been greased with silicone grease, 
uh, you can spend your weekend trying to do that. So what I have come up with, what I this is something actually that you probably learned if you ever learned to sew. Uh, my mother actually used one of these, but not quite. But this is the concept. It's a, a piece of monofilament that's glued together at the end. So what you do is slide the, uh, the end through. We're going to string the, the line. And you can see the end comes out. Uh, I hope you can see that. The end comes out that way. And the loop is still out. So you take the line and put it through the loop. And then, trust me, it's a whole lot easier than, than it looks. But uh, so you put that through the loop. And then you use that to pull it through. And it pulls the line right through, uh, which makes it easy. And especially when you're stringing it from the fingers up through the hand and through the back of the palm or back of the hand, um, this, this just really helps, makes it easier, quicker. And, uh, and this is a great thing to, to use for that. The, uh, as far as the uh, adjustments, I think this is probably the most important thing. Um, I've seen you know a lot of hands, a lot of people using them, and um, adjusting it is is key and probably most the most important thing. You know all the function, all the mechanics of it is is important, but uh, if it's not fit and it's not adjusted properly, it is it's going to be frustrating and it's not going to work as well as it could and it should without uh, without any more effort other than just knowing how to adjust it properly. So. We've got, uh, think of your own hand, you know, at normal, at rest, I guess, or just when you're grabbing something, your hand's going to be about in this position. You know, I've seen hands that where they're wide open like that. Um, it's, nobody has walks around with a hand like that. Um, so probably want it, you know, at just a comfortable at rest about there. You can see it's a little off center. Um, but you know, maybe that's about your resting point, but, um, you can see that's about where you, where you want it, uh, you know, just similar to where your, your normal hand would be. Now, as far as the range or, uh, as far as the grip and range of movement, the, probably the most important thing, if I can get this, this, you want the finger, the, the, the opposable grip here that, we have, you want the, the forefinger and the thumb to come right together. Uh, that allows you to grab or grip smaller things. You'd be more precise, um, you know, like picking up, you know, small things like this or, you know, uh, things. I know some people have set them up so that the, uh, the thumb closes inside like that. And I think the reasoning is so that it'll close tighter to grip something. But um, if you've got the forefinger coming together, you can grab things like this, and which you couldn't do if the thumb was, you know, curling inside like that. Now, as far as grabbing smaller things, you know, if the fingers come together, then as you press, you know, the hand um, compresses and you know, you can grab some pretty small things, maybe not a pen or something like that, but you can hold on to something that's pretty strong. So it gives you a grip from, you know, something fairly small and precise to something bigger that you can get a good grip on. So, you know, at a not too uncomfortable, you know, hand open, you want it to open about that far where you can grab anything, you know, large. You want it to come together with the fingertips together with this pretty much lined up or even just a little more open when these finger, uh, fingers come together. And that's important because I've seen a lot of hands where the fingers don't come together until the, the, you know, the hand is, you know, until it's bent like this. So you can imagine trying to pick something up, your hand's bent all the way around like this and it's, 
and it just is difficult. So you want the fingers to close, you know, at about a position like that. So when you're grabbing, you can, you can, you can grab and not have your arm all the way, having to bend your arm all the way down. So, so yeah, range of motion right in through there, hand straight when the fingers are tips are touched together, and your you know the folks that use these will have a much better uh, better use of it uh, if it's adjusted properly. Part of the adjustment is making sure that the cuff fits uh, pretty snug and there's not a lot of movement in the hand, not a lot of movement in the cuff. Because if there is, you know, a little bit of movement in your hand is, is not going to translate into moving the fingers. It's going to, you're going to be moving the loose cuff and uh, you just lose a lot of your range of movement in, you know, a sloppy fit. So good fit, um, you know, the range of movement in between those, uh, between that range there. And uh, I think it'll be a, a lot better uh, setup for folks that are using them. So uh, I think that should do it. Um, I, hope every, I hope that helps everybody. I hope it's uh, useful in putting these together. Um, I've got a couple other videos that I put together. You can see them on uh, Prosthetic Hand Test Lab on uh, I got a YouTube channel. So um, if anybody has any questions, you can leave me comments there or i um, always, always happy to help test uh, or, you know, give advice on somebody's design or um, whatever. So um, anyway, hope that's useful. It's uh, part, it's from my experience and um, I think it, uh, I think it can help you build a, a better hand and fit it better to the folks that are using them. So anyway, thank you.